Thank you very much, Stefano. We couldn't wait, really, today. It was quite long, but, but finally we have another four satellites. We are happy about it. So, ministers, members of the parliament, uh, president of uh, Jean-Yves Legal is not here, but he will be, I think. President of CNES, president of Visa, Durian. Uh, thank you, very, dear friends, of course. Thank you very much uh, for being here with us, and I'm really happy to be here with you. This is, I think, the last uh, launch during this mandate of the Commission, so it's even more important for me. Um, I think that we all have to congratulate ourselves, especially you, of course, and especially them behind the, behind the, the wall, uh, for this successful 10th Galileo launch. Uh, because behind this success, really, there are thousands of people um, across Europe working together as a team. This is, I think, the most important. Of course, I would like particularly to uh, thank European Space Agency, Ariane Spass, uh, GSA, oh, I have not mentioned before, but of course, important agency for us, and CNES, um, and of course, the French authorities for, for all of your help. Uh, today's launch is really important milestone in the, in the, in the, in the, in the history of Galileo, for Galileo. Uh, this launch brings the constella constellation to 26 satellites in orbit, and really, takes Galileo one step closer to, this, to its full operational capability. But above all, I think it is unique European achievement at this launch, and, and this launch will give both Galileo and the EU full worldwide coverage. Um, this launch is also, as I mentioned last, uh, during this commission mandate, um, uh, as, as you, some of you probably remember, uh, maybe all of you, some of you. Uh, I came to, at, at the beginning of my mandate and starting from the very beginning, I had a very clear objective to deliver Galileo on time and, and on budget. And we managed to do this, of course, thanks to all of you. Uh, since then, we launched successfully 20 Galileo satellites that was well described and, uh, by, by, by Stefan. Um, uh, six out of the seven Cop Coper uh, Copernicus satellites also currently in orbit. Uh, and of course, uh, just a few words about the future, because I think it is now extremely important to look to the future and, and think about, of course, being proud of what, what, we, what we have achieved so far. Um, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not too often uh, to say that Europe is building the most precise satellite navigation system in the world and the best Earth, Earth observation system in the world. So this is, we are really the space power. But of course, the world is moving fast forward, so we are thinking about the data, the private sector that is becoming an initiator of space projects. Uh, space, of course, extremely important topic. Space is becoming neighbor for our collective, collective security and defense tasks. So uh, Europe needs to act and react on these developments. We proposed as a commission a new EU space program with 16 billion euros for the next um, uh, financial period, 2021-2027. So for those pre uh, seven years, we proposed roadmap, uh, which is quite clear, continuity, evolution, and adaptation. Uh, our first objective is very, again, clear. We must maintain and upgrade the existing infrastructure. So Galileo, Egnos, and Copernicus. This is very crucial, otherwise the, the, our past investment will be lost. So we planned 9.7 billion euros for Galileo and 5.8 billion euros for Copernicus. The se second priority is to make sure that the European space sector adapts to the new re realities, especially, as I mentioned before, to the, to the new security needs. Uh, for this, we want to progressively launch two new initiatives, uh, SSA, so Space Situation and Awareness System, and uh, GovSatcom. The third priority, promotion uh, of a European new space approach. So we are doing this from the European taxpayers' money, but you are, all of the things that we are doing are for the innovative and, and disruptive European startups and the companies. And less priority, but I think uh, in, this, in this group, in this team, it's very important to mention, this is about our launcher policy. Um, Ariane's Pass is the European launch service providers of choice for the European Commission. Um, and the European Union, through the Commission, we, we will have to perform around 30 launches in the next several years. 
Um, we support both Ariane 6 and Vega C. Commission became the first institutional customer to order two Ariane 6 for the next Galileo launches. And in the future, we propose in the EU space program really to aggregate demands for the launchers, but also to support the adaptation of the ground infrastructure. Again, it's extremely important to mention, especially here in Kuru. So our collective priority has to be now to deliver both on Ariane 6 and on Vega C. We must also together and in parallel speed up our effort on closing the technological gap. So I think it's, it's important to discuss it, for instance, on reusability. It is paramount to the European, or European Union strategic autonomy. Um, so let me conclude again by saying that today's launch really demonstrates what success Europe can achieve when we, when we work together, when we work uh, hand in hand. Sp space, I keep repeating this, but it's very positive and very concrete example of what we can do together in Europe. So thank you again to all the teams uh, who makes the European dream a reality. Thank you very much. Bien, après ce superbe lancement, j'ai commencé à fêter d'ailleurs avec les gens qui sont derrière. Euh, je voudrais moi aussi euh, remercier et féliciter like tous ceux qui en sont à l'origine, l'Agence spatiale européenne, et bien sûr euh, la Commission, euh, Ariane Espace, Ariane Group, euh, OHV pour les satellites, et puis toute l'industrie spatiale européenne et tous ceux qui sont intervenus pour euh, ce superbe lancement. Maintenant, regardons devant nous, à court terme, on a déjà eu des nouvelles du Centre spatial de Toulouse, puisque vous le savez, c'est le CNES qui va mettre les satellites sur leur orbite définitive, et donc les nouvelles sont excellentes, et l'acquisition des couvertures des panneaux solaires. We have acquisition, the opening of the panels, panels and the pointing is uh, gone ahead and will continue for a to come. And then later that, we'll have to continue. Galileo is in the process of becoming the leading European space success. It's extraordinary. We recall the launch of the first satellite. I'm not even going to mention JVA, JVA, JVA. It was launched some way back, but actually 2011 is not such a long time ago. It was less than seven years ago. We have 26 satellites in orbit. Système qui devient le meilleur mondial. Carlo De Dorit va vous en parler tout à l'heure. On est à 400 millions d'utilisateurs et ça continue à monter, à monter, à monter. On a une précision avec d'autres systèmes. On sait dans quel rue on est, avec quel rue on sait de quel côté de la rue. On a la datation. Donc c'est l'Europe qui gagne. Et il le faut encore. Bravo à tous. On est aujourd'hui fiers d'être européens et fiers aussi d'être guyanais parce que je remercie une fois encore tous les guyanais sans lesquels tout ceci n'existerait pas. Merci et bravo. Whom none of this would have been possible. Thank you and well done. So, good morning, everybody. I will not be able to speak in French, but I will not bore you with trying to speak in Spanish and having translation. So, as Stefan said, I have seen many rockets. Um, from inside and from outside, but this launch was really very emotional. We have, have achieved a lot today. Um, instead of astronaut, I speak here as a minister of Spain, so one of the countries who participates uh, with their industry to all of these developments. And, and also, uh, it's my honor to be the current rotating president of the, of the ISA Council. Um, uh, really, Ariane 5 has uh, demonstrated that it's a great rocket and probably and arguably, arguably the most reliable in the world today. So congratulations to Ariane Spice, certainly on yet another successful launch. Uh, now we got uh, Galileo probably. Um, everybody has uh, been talking about the same thing. So Galileo now is now complete. I, I, I really think that uh, the public should know uh, this uh, in the most uh, uh, expressive way possible that the Galileo becomes now complete and uh, the people who ask me and when does Galileo become an uh, alternative to GPS so we can say well already a long time ago probably but today is a good day to say that that we do um, I think that uh, thanks to the sustained political will and, uh, and of the European Commission, we now have such a flagship of European technology and space. I think that that has to be recognized. And it is at the service of everyone in the world, but especially of European citizens and governments. Many industries from all around Europe 
have uh, contributed and cooperated under the technical leadership of the European Space Agency to develop both Ariane and Galileo. So I would like to extend my thanks to the many thousands of workers in the European industry that designed and carefully manufactured these machines and the dozens of uh, project management staff at ESA who made sure that quality was kept always maximum, development risks, risks were only incurred wisely, and public money was spent efficiently all the way. As a former astronaut and enthusiast uh, European, I choose to think that the next endeavors we uh, jointly engage after this great milestone of today will be inspiring and thrilling for fellow Europeans. With the institutional cooperation and top industry that brought Ariane, Galileo, Copernicus, we can do anything. So let's aim really high next time for something new. Monsieur le ministre de la science, de l'innovation et de l'enseignement supérieur, cher Pedro Duke, monsieur le, le ministre, euh, cher Sébastien, euh, merci beaucoup d'avoir fait coïncider euh, nos agendas de travail euh, ici en Guyane pour euh, que nous puissions assister ensemble à cet événement. Et je profite euh, pour saluer tous les habitants de Vernon euh, au travers de vous. Madame la commissaire, cher Esbieta, euh, quel très très beau succès. Commissioner Klinkowska, what a tremendous Préfet, success Monsieur le Président de l'Agence Spatiale Européenne et du Centre Préfet. National d'Études Spatiales, cher Jean-Yves, Monsieur le Directeur Monsieur général de l'Agence Spatiale Européenne, Mr. Monsieur le Président d'Ariane Group, Monsieur le Président d'Ariane Espace, Mr. Mesdames Jean et Messieurs les parlementaires, Israël, Monsieur le Président de la CTG, Mesdames et Messieurs les élus, Mesdames et Messieurs. Ladies and gentlemen. Je suis infiniment heureuse d'être parmi vous pour ce 99e lancement d'Ariane 5. C'est avec à la fois beaucoup de joie et beaucoup de fierté que j'ai assisté à ce nouveau succès. Au-delà d'un moment extraordinaire où se côtoient l'émerveillement et malgré tout un frisson d'appréhension, ce tir représente en effet ce que l'Europe spatiale sait faire de mieux. Ce succès, c'est d'abord celui d'Ariane 5, conçu et développé par l'Agence spatiale européenne, le Centre national d'études spatiales et l'ensemble de l'industrie spatiale européenne. Pierre angulaire de notre accès à l'espace, Ariane 5 est le lanceur le plus fiable au monde, mais il est aussi un symbole de l'excellence scientifique, technologique et industrielle de la France et de l'Europe. À ce titre, ce succès est aussi celui du Centre spatial guyanais, dont la disponibilité et l'efficacité sont enviés par le monde entier. Le lancement auquel nous venons d'assister est également une illustration de la réussite du programme de localisation et de datation Galileo, développé par la Commission européenne et l'Agence spatiale européenne et exploité par la GSA. Les satellites lancés aujourd'hui ont été construits dans plusieurs pays européens et vont désormais être mis à poste par les experts du CNES au Centre Spatial de Toulouse. Ils viendront compléter la constellation Galileo, qui grâce à ses performances exceptionnelles constitue un atout stratégique et économique majeur pour l'Union Européenne. En générant des données d'une très grande précision, Galileo permettra l'émergence de nouveaux services dans des domaines variés et au bénéfice de l'ensemble des citoyens européens, car nous devons toujours penser à rappeler à quel point l'espace euh, est source de profits et de bénéfices pour l'ensemble des citoyens, mais aussi pour notre planète, notamment grâce à, à la surveillance du climat qui peut se faire grâce à nos satellites. Ce succès intervient à un moment clé pour l'Europe spatiale. Le programme Ariane 6 avance rapidement et permettra à l'Europe, dans les années à venir, de disposer d'un nouveau lanceur aussi fiable qu'Ariane 5, mais plus compétitif, plus adapté à l'évolution des missions spatiales. Et en ce sens, la dernière réunion du Conseil de l'Agence spatiale européenne a permis des avancées importantes pour Ariane 6 et a démontré le soutien collectif des États 
d'États membres apportés à ce programme. De même, le succès du premier tir à feu du propulseur P-120C, il y a tout juste quelques jours, ici au Centre spatial Guyanais, constitue une étape majeure dans le développement d'Ariane 6 et de Vega 6. Cette dynamique va se poursuivre et s'amplifier dans les mois qui viennent. À l'invitation de mon homologue espagnol, nous nous réunirons le 25 octobre à Madrid avec les autres ministres européens en charge du spatial pour partager nos visions, nos ambitions et donner le coup d'envoi de la préparation de la conférence ministérielle de l'ESA de 2019. Cette conférence qui verra l'engagement de nouveaux programmes spatiaux constituera un jalon important. Un autre jalon important sera atteint en 2021 avec le début du nouveau cadre financier pluriannuel de l'Union européenne et les propositions récemment formulées par la Commission européenne brillent par leur ambition et constituent une marque de confiance importante pour le secteur spatial. Je suis sûr qu'elles vont consolider et amplifier encore les succès de l'Europe spatiale. Le succès de l'Europe spatiale et le lancement d'aujourd'hui en est une remarquable illustration découle avant tout d'une forte volonté politique en France comme en Europe. Cette volonté qui n'a jamais faibli a permis depuis 50 ans de porter notre secteur spatial au meilleur niveau mondial elle l'a fait en s'appuyant sur l'excellence de notre recherche, de nos laboratoires, de nos universités, de nos agences spatiales, dont la compétence et le professionnalisme sont unanimement reconnus. Mais elle l'a fait aussi en s'appuyant sur un tissu industriel solide, diversifié, constitué de grands groupes comme de start-up, de petites et de moyennes entreprises, d'entreprises de taille intermédiaire, qui ensemble ont donné... Euh, des champions mondiaux dont la France et l'Europe peuvent être fiers. Car c'est lorsque les institutions publiques et le secteur privé travaillent main dans la main au service d'un objectif exceptionnel que les plus grandes avancées se réalisent. Au nom du gouvernement français, je tiens à féliciter très chaleureusement l'ensemble des acteurs du succès de ce vol VA244 et à rendre hommage aux femmes et aux hommes, scientifiques, ingénieurs, techniciens, administratifs, tous ceux qui ont contribué à cette réussite. Celles et ceux présents ici en Guyane, tout d'abord, les personnels du CSG, les services de l'État, les forces armées et industrielles qui ont rendu ce lancement possible. Je souhaite aussi féliciter, bien sûr, l'Agence spatiale européenne et ses États membres pour leur soutien indéfectible aux lanceurs européens, ainsi que la Commission européenne et la GSA pour le succès de Galileo et la confiance faite à Ariane. Mes remerciements vont également au CNES, dont les quatre centres sont à l'honneur, la direction des lanceurs pour Ariane 5, le CSG pour le lancement, le centre spatial de Toulouse pour les satellites et le siège pour le succès de Galiléo. Enfin, bien sûr, je félicite Ariane Group, Ariane Espace et tous leurs sous-traitants pour le succès de ce lanceur et de ce lancement, et OHB et ses partenaires pour celui des satellites. Pour conclure, je souhaite évoquer avec vous les prochains événements d'une année spatiale particulièrement dense. On nous annonce des découvertes extraordinaires sur Mars, mais aussi le fait que sept lancements sont encore prévus ici au Centre spatial de Guyane, avec notamment la mission Bepi Colombo qui partira en octobre vers Mercure avec plus de 11 expériences scientifiques à son bord. Et euh, notre satellite d'observation militaire, c'est le qui sera lancé en décembre. Deux événements scientifiques Two extraordinaires scientific vont également se tenir dans les prochains mois. L'atterrissage du robot mascotte sur l'astéroïde de Ryugu le 3 octobre et celui d'Insight sur Mars le 26 novembre. Peu d'aventures encore, que de frissons. Je vous donne rendez-vous à tous. À vous tous, les amis du spatial européen, pour tous ces grands moments à venir. Merci. Madame la ministre, Madame ou Mrs. Commissioner Elsvieta, Monsieur le ministre, and astronaut minister, dear Pedro, friends and colleagues, yes, it's a great day again. 
Uh, we had some great days here already, but this is also already a very great one. And I would like to thank, first of all, all of the actors behind and in front of the curtain, meaning all the workers, the technicians, the engineers, the scientists, making it possible to have a European satellite navigation system. Of course, the European Commission, of course, the um, GSA, of course, uh, CNES, of course, also industry uh, supporting and realizing these dreams. And of course, also the European Space Agency. And when I say European Space Agency, I mean the executive as well as our member states. In 2016, Elzbieta and myself signed a document, a joint statement about Europe in space, about what we have as joint objectives. We were saying there should be a full integration of space into society and economy. And I think satellite navigation is a good example for that, because each and every one can use it already, and therefore it is also supporting economy. The second goal we signed was global competitive European space sector best proof by, by uh, um, uh, Galileo, because it's now best in class worldwide. So it, is, it shows that the European industry is competitive. So also the second goal was reached. And the third one was autonomy in accessing and using space. And again, it's trivial. This is what we saw today with the launcher, Ion 5, what we, uh, which, we, which we will see also with the full constellation of the Galileo. And all of this comes for me together in two, two small words. One is United Space in Europe, and the other one, United Europe in Space, because this is what we are doing. And Galileo was a dream. For several people, it was a dream which will never come true. So, and there is, uh, it's not so often quoted. Ronald Reagan is not so often quoted. In Germany, yes, because of the wall, but other quotes you don't find. But one quote I think is very important for me. He said, you don't only launch rockets, you launch dreams. And this is what was done with Galileo. You launched dreams. Dreams is something people have to have to develop. And therefore, I would like that today, I would like to mention a person who had a dream. Unfortunately, he cannot be with us today. He would be very happy because it was the founder of OHB, which was not a space company, it was Otto Hydraulic Bremen, which means Otto Hydraulics in Bremen. And so it was five people only at the beginning. And the founder of that was Manfred Fuchs, the father of uh, Marco Fuchs. And it would be today his 80th birthday. And therefore, I would like all of you that you remember that uh, new space is not only an American idea. It was done in Europe, and he was a very good proof of that. Thank you very much. So, Minister, Commissioner, Member of the Parliament, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as a proud uh, European citizen, uh, I think today this is an excellent opportunity to really uh, celebrate what uh, Europe can achieve uh, when uh, resources, uh, competencies and commitment are brought together. Indeed, uh, what uh, has been done in the last uh, four years is quite remarkable. Uh, eight launches, 22 satellites uh, in orbit, uh, is really a fantastic uh, result. Or, as uh, rightly so many may say, the uh, success of a program is not uh, measured by the number of satellites, but really the market, by the user. Well, here as well, uh, we can say that uh, Galileo has made uh, remarkable results. In the last 18 months, Galileo has moved from zero, the day when the initial services have been announced, to, we have heard, 400 million users. Uh, this is one figure I could uh, add that uh, as of uh, tomorrow, uh, Volvo will announce that uh, some new models will embark uh, Galileo compatibility for the 112 system. 95% of the receiver manufacturer are embarking on Galileo. So these are only some figures which uh, tell you the results which have been uh, um, uh, achieved so far. So uh, now let me bring, let me wear the hat 
of uh, the GSA director. And here again, I need to join the words uh, of my previous speaker by thanking, first of all, the private uh, sectors, the satellite and manufacturer for certain, uh, Ariane Space uh, for sure, uh, Space Opal, the operator and service provider, and as well uh, the uh, so-called downstream market, the uh, end user manufacturer. We have today, I'm very pleased and thankful for them uh, to joining us uh, today, some of the early adopter Qualcomm, uh, Novatel, Hexado, Hexagon, uh, Rockwell Collins. So thank you to be here. You were those who uh, first believed in Galileo, and if these are the figures today, is also thanks to you. Then, uh, of course, I need to thank uh, my team, uh, the GSA team, uh, which has been uh, working hard uh, uh, to be here to start with, uh, and uh, with their competence, uh, with their commitment. So let me have two words on the GSA. The GSA is a small agency with uh, great ambitions, which is linking space to user need. In other words, uh, to translate in concrete this major investment of EU in a success. Well, uh, our work, our responsibility basically start today with the separation of the, of the satellites. The GSA together with uh, their partner, Space Opal, CNES in Toulouse, and uh, his uh, team uh, is responsible from now until uh, the point in time when the satellites will be delivered in their final positioning. This will happen in about 14, 15 uh, days. And after that, uh, there will be a phase, so-called uh, in-orbit uh, testing, which will last around uh, six months when the satellites will be fully characterized, fully checked, fully tested, and finally delivered to the operation. So after that, the GSA will start from there on uh, dialoguing with the, with the users, dialogue, dialoguing with the, the receiver manufacturer, and developing with them services and application. One second focus, less apparent by definition, is security. And security started already here in this launch campaign, uh, managing the security aspects of the, of the flight uh, keys and uh, will continue in this uh, early operation phase. And during the whole life of, uh, of uh, the Galileo operation through two uh, operational center, which uh, are working 24 hours a day, one uh, in, uh, in uh, Paris and one very soon uh, in Madrid. So uh, a good service has to be as well secure. So uh, let, me, uh, let me conclude my, my few words with a, a, a small story. At the beginning of the year, the GSA was uh, at the World Mobile uh, Conference, uh, which is uh, the main appointment for telecommunication operators. And the GSA was there with a small, tiny stand uh, with a quote, uh, which is, uh, the sky is not the limit. And someone was asking, but what, what, what does it mean? What is it for? Well, our feeling is that we are really at the beginning of the potential of GNSS and Galileo. We do believe that uh, uh, we are at the edge, at the start of a technology revolution where GNSS and Galileo is really on the front line. So the tangible achievement that we can already experience today landing on 300 airports all across Europe, or simply uh, saving tens of life every month with the Galileo SAR signal, or with the uh, extensive work which the car manufacturers are doing with us to bring a Galileo in the future auto, uh, automotive, automatic cars, are tangible signals. Now, it is uh, to us, to the GSA, and to all the partners involved to lead this revolution by working together across institutions and discipline
to overcome challenges and explore unbeaten paths that can bring space closer to Earth. Because indeed, and we have proved once again today, the sky is not the limit. Thank you. Yeah, dear Commissioner Bienkowska, dear ministers, dear colleagues and friends, this has been the completion of work order one and work order two. This, of course, uh, is a very big achievement for all of us, of course, especially also for OHP. I would like to uh, start with a few thanks, and of course, I'd like to start again uh, as, uh, with uh, thanking Ariane Spass for another flawless launch. Stefan, great job again. Um, it looks so easy, uh, it is very difficult, and I think everybody who debates launchers and what to do in launchers and the future of European access to space should come here, witness it, and then make the debate. So I think uh, that changes perspective uh, in a way uh, of a lot of appreciation of what we have achieved and what we can do. So thank you very much, Stefan. Of course, thank you very much also to CNES, always perfectly organized, uh, very professional uh, and wonderful hospitality. Thank you very much. Um, of course, the, um, the biggest thanks go to our customers, to the European uh, Commission for its uh, trust, for its confidence um, and the very good cooperation over the last years. Thank you very much, especially uh, uh, Commissioner Bienkowska for the, the confidence you put also in OHP at times uh, when we started some years ago. And I think we uh, have witnessed a number of launches together here. Uh, see what we all have achieved together. We can really be proud of that. Thank you very much for that. Of course, also ESA. Uh, Jan, thank you uh, for your kind words also. I th uh, that was very, uh, very uh, meaningful and moving to me. Thank you. Uh, but also uh, Paul and Daniel for the performance uh, show today, for the professionalism that we uh, uh, see since many years, for the help, uh, and also for the guidance and the, the learning that you um, um, help us. Uh, um, our teams have become really, really integrated teams with uh, um, an exceptional uh, spirit and exceptional cooperation, and um, that, that is really a, a joyful uh, example of how industry and, or, um, and customer organizations can work together. Thank you very much for that. DLR, I would like to thank very much. Uh, the teams in, uh, uh, in GSOC, which are monitoring uh, to, uh, the layup today also and following, but of course also Pascal, you and your team uh, being uh, uh, so helpful over all the years. Uh, this has been very much uh, helpful and appreciated. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the continuous support that we also have uh, from their side. And Carlo, GSA is of course the, the ultimate uh, user. It's uh, very kind and nice to hear how you report about the progress because this is at the end what it all is about. And uh, coming here, looking at the presentations uh, for uh, um, the, the briefing that was supposed to be last night, seeing all these big achievements in terms of 17 manufacturers, and we are really in the middle of a market. This is a big success. And uh, GSA is becoming more and more um, important for that. Uh, um, so that is very um, core to us. Of course, the industrial team. And I'd like to start again with SSTL. I don't know uh, where they are. They are over there. They're hiding uh, uh, in the back. But of course, this would not be possible without SSTL's wonderful cooperation. Not an easy job for you these days, I know. It's very much appreciated. Uh, and we're very happy to have you on board uh, and hopefully to complete uh, many more satellites to come. Uh, thank you very much for such an outstanding work. The whole industrial team has performed very, very well. Um, and I'd like to mention especially, of course, our OHP system team. I'm very, very proud. They are now watching either in Bremen or in Oberpfaffenhofen uh, at GSOC. I'm very, very proud about what we achieved uh, uh, over the last years. Um, as I said, today we completed batch one and two. So we launched 22 satellites in less than uh, four years. That's an exceptional uh, uh, implementation rate. Um, and that has been achieved uh, because, of course, the full dedication, because of the very good uh, cooperation that our teams have uh, with the teams of everybody else. And you can be sure that, uh, of course, being this big first flagship program for OHB, I'm really, really uh, proud of that, um, the dedication and also the, the quality uh, of the products that really uh, have, uh, have been built. So, of course, Work Order 3 is now on our mind. We're working very hard on Work Order 3. That's the next big goal to implement that. And everybody who's visiting uh, Bremen for the EIC in early October should come by and look at the, 
satellites in production, uh, 12 satellites in production to be launched soon. And they can be visited and looked at. And I think it's uh, rounding the, the, the view of, of how our industry to see really how manufacturing is done. And uh, again, uh, I'm very much looking forward to be here again, launching the next satellites uh, uh, soon uh, out of uh, the same Kourou uh, facility uh, with the Ion 6 then, Stefan. Uh, so that will be a special experience. Uh, and uh, again, thank you very much uh, for giving us that opportunity. Thank you. Okay, the day has been already a bit long, so I will be short. Uh, it was important for us to congratulate and to thank the ministers, but uh, I would like also to, to give some personal thanks. Uh, regarding uh, the European Commission, we have spoken about uh, our uh, commissioner, but uh, behind the commissioner there is a team. Thomas Uzak, Fabrice Contour, Pierre Delso, Matthias Pechke, they are all with us uh, today and uh, they have done a lot for all these successes we have had uh, together for the very ambitious uh, European space uh, strategy. So I want to thank uh, the four of you for, for these achievements. Regarding ESA, for sure, uh, Jan uh, has spoken. ESA is for uh, Ariane Space, a uh, key partner, a key uh, customer, a day-to-day -day, uh, friend. Uh, so I want to thank uh, Jan for uh, his trust. I want to thank uh, Paul, uh, Paul Verhoff, who is uh, the customer of this mission, and for sure Daniel Neuenschwander, uh, who has uh, the patience to support uh, industry in all terms, day on a daily basis. The support of Visa would not be possible without the one of our national space agencies. And we have the privilege today uh, to have uh, with us uh, the president uh, of CNES, but also the president uh, of DLR, Pascal Ehrenfreund, the president of ASI, Roberto Battiston, representative of the CDTI. So uh, on behalf uh, of uh, Iron Space and Iron Group, I want to thank uh, all uh, of you also for your active support to uh, European space ambitions. For sure, uh, this success is a success of an industrial team. Marco uh, uh, has uh, spoken uh, on behalf of OHB system. We have worked uh, a lot together. We, we have been through important milestone when it was to uh, delivering, uh, delivering satellites, uh, your satellites into orbit. And it has always been a great pleasure to work with you. I'm sure we will have a further opportunity with OHB. We have uh, one satellite, EDRSC, which is now coming. So things uh, uh, will go on uh, together. Uh, I want, uh, for sure, uh, I have already thanked uh, ISA and the member states, I want to thank uh, industry. I want to thank uh, Ariane Group. You know that uh, Ariane Group is uh, our mother company, that uh, Ariane Group is a prime contractor uh, of Ariane 5, and for sure tomorrow uh, Ariane 6. Alain Charmeau uh, is uh, with us. And uh, I must say that uh, together we have made a change. We have made the H0. Today it was... Uh, Formally, we can say the first uh, edge zero, and uh, we have done that in full confidence between Ariane Space and Ariane Group. And I really want to thank Ariane Group and all uh, the, the other industrial partners for uh, the success of today. And for sure, uh, I should thank as well our grand industrialists on the basis and Ariane Space team. I will conclude uh, by uh, coming back uh, to uh, what uh, Frédéric Vidal has uh, partially announced our next missions. We will have uh, three very important missions in the coming weeks and months. On August 21st, we will, uh, with Vega, make a very important mission for ESA Earth Observation. It is ADEM Aeolus, and uh, this mission will be another example of our ability uh, to uh, fulfill European space ambitions. On September the 5th, we will make the 100th Ariane 5. And we will do it for Intelsat, Skyperfect GSAT, and Azer Cosmos. And I think it's quite a symbol that the 99th Ariane 5 was dedicated to our institutions and the 100th to export. You know that Ariane is relying on this, uh, both uh, uh, customers, Europe, it's absolutely vital for us, but also export. And the 100th Ariane 5 will be uh, quite, uh, uh, quite an illustration of our ability 
to be successful at uh, export. Finally, in October, the 18th of October, this is the targeted slot, we will uh, deliver uh, towards Mercury, final journey of the satellite of Bepi Colombo, with uh, IN5. It will be a key and, and inspiring scientific mission. We will do that for uh, ESA science, and we are uh, already preparing very actively. So now it's just time for one thing, les vacances, and so enjoy your vacations and enjoy your summer. Thank you very much.